Every victory comes with its own set of costs. In this video, we take a look at the staggering cost of human life in five of history's bloodiest battles, where the sheer number of warriors who lost their lives defies imagination. Before we start make sure to subscribe to this channel for more amazing content. The majority of a soldier's life is spent either waiting for or preparing for battle. When the time comes to actually take action, it is almost always a chaotic, bloody, and brief process at best. Skirmishes, probing patrols, and accidental run, ends with the adversary in the dark are all examples of the kinds of encounters that are typical in combat. On other occasions, fear will be the undoing of an army as it will cause men to flee the perceived threat of death before there have been significant casualties sustained by either side. And last, but not least, there is the conflict that defies the conventional wisdom regarding the scale of death and destruction that should be expected from war. These are the days when neither side is willing to give up the fight, or, as is so frequently the case, a general strategy is such that it leaves the adversary with no way out, leaving them at the mercy of the victors. Number 5. The Siege of Gettysburg, in 1863. Unionists suffered 23,000 deaths, while Confederates lost 23,000 lives, bringing the total number of fatalities to 46,000. As a consequence, the Union won. During the American Civil War, the day that the tide of war turned in favor of the Union was also the day that saw the highest number of casualties in a single battle throughout the entirety of the conflict. This was due to the fact that there were more people on both sides of the conflict fighting on that particular day. Following a string of victories for the Confederacy, General Lee marched his troops further north into Union territory. After three days of back, ah, forth fighting, the Unionists eventually emerged victorious in the conflict. The battle is best known as the decisive engagement of the American Civil War. It was made famous by Abraham Lincoln's address at Gettysburg and served as a symbol of the Union's eventual success. Number 2. 216B.C. The Battle of Cannae. Carthage and Rome were the parties involved in the conflict. Of the 60,000 people killed in the conflict, 10,000 were Carthaginians and 50,000 were Romans. As a consequence, Carthage emerged victorious. After Hannibal led his Carthaginian army across the Alps and to victory over two Roman armies at Trebia and Lake Trasimene, he wanted to fight one last decisive battle against the Romans. The Romans positioned their heavy infantry in the center of the battlefield in the hope that they could break through the middle of the Carthaginian army. Hannibal, on the other hand, positioned his most elite troops on the army's flanks in preparation for an assault from the Romans in the center of the field. As the Carthaginian center fell apart. The sides of the Carthaginian army collapsed in on the Roman flanks. The mass of legionaries in the rear ranks forced the front ranks to move forward in an unstoppable manner, but they were unaware that they were encircling themselves in the process. At some point in time, the Carthaginian cavalry was able to circle around, close the gap, and completely encircle the Roman army. In the battle that took place in close quarters, the legionaries were trapped and had no way out. As a result, they were compelled to fight to the death. A total of 50,000 Roman citizens and two consuls perished as a direct consequence of this event. Number 3. The First Day of Fighting on the Somme, July 1, 1916. Belligerents, Britain vs. Germany. 60,000 British and 8,000 German soldiers were killed. Total, 68,000. Result, indecisive. The bloodiest day in the history of the British Army occurred during the beginning stages of a battle that would last for several months, result in the deaths of more than one million people, and leave the tactical situation largely unchanged. An artillery barrage was supposed to be used to pound the German defenses to the point where the attacking British and French troops could simply walk in and occupy the opposing trenches. This was the plan. The bombardment did not have the catastrophic effect that was anticipated. The machine. Gunfire from the German positions began as soon as the soldiers emerged from the trenches. As a result of poor artillery coordination, advancing infantry was frequently shelled by their own supporting fire, or they were left dangerously exposed because their creeping barrage left them unprotected. Both of these outcomes were a direct result of poor artillery coordination. Even though a significant number of lives were lost, very few of the objectives had been achieved by the time night fell. The assault would carry on in the same vein all the way up until October of that year. Number 2. 
the Battle of Leipzig, which took place in 1813. France, Austria, Prussia, and Russia were the belligerents in this conflict. The French suffered 30,000 casualties, while the Allies suffered 54,000, for a total of 84,000. The end result was a win for the coalition. The Battle of Leipzig was the largest battle that took place on European soil prior to the start of World War I. It was also the most decisive defeat that Napoleon ever experienced. The French army, which was under attack from every angle, performed exceptionally well and managed to keep their foes at bay for more than nine hours before being overcome by the sheer weight of their opponent's numbers. Napoleon, seeing that defeat was almost certain, started a well organized retreat across the lone bridge that was still standing. As a result of the bridge being blown up too soon, 20,000 French soldiers were left stranded, and many of them perished in the river while trying to cross it. As a result of the defeat, the Allies were able to make progress into France itself. Number 1. The Siege of Stalingrad, which lasted from 1942 to 1943. Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union were the two countries involved in the conflict. Approximately 2 million people died as a result of the conflict. The end result was a Soviet victory. The German offensive began with a series of devastating bombings carried out by the Luftwaffe, which caused a significant portion of Stalingrad to be reduced to ruins. However, the bombing produced a landscape that is largely expendable. However, as the army continued to advance, they found themselves embroiled in vicious fighting with the Soviets on a house, two, house level. In spite of the fact that they controlled more than 90% of the city, the Wehrmacht was unable to eliminate the remaining Soviet soldiers who refused to surrender. As the weather turned bitterly cold, the Red Army launched a two-pronged attack on the German 6th Army in Stalingrad in November of 1942. This occurred at the same time as the weather began to turn. The flanks gave way, and the 6th Army found itself surrounded, not only by the Red Army but also by the harsh winter weather of Russia. Starvation, the cold, and random assaults from the Soviet Union all started to take their toll. Despite this, Hitler did not give the 6th Army permission to retreat. In February of 1943, after a failed attempt by the Germans to break out of their encirclement and after all supply lines had been severed, the 6th Army was completely destroyed. So what do you think of these battles? Let us know in the comments section and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.